Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to do another tween example, this time with GUIs. And what we're going to be making is a button that doesn't want to be clicked. So the way this is going to work, whenever the player tries to click on this button here, it's going to run around to a different part of the screen. So this might be something fun you can do at the beginning of your game with your play button. You can have it run around the screen as the player tries to click it. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So for this example, I'm just going to try to keep it simple and just use a regular button. So to get this button, all you have to do is click on the UI button. You're going to insert a screen GUI, and then you're going to click on text button. So you can take this button and customize it to look however you want to. I'm just going to leave it basic for now so we can just focus on the script. Okay, so after you customize your button, you're going to be adding a local script inside of it. So you can find your button under the starter GUI. It should be inside the screen GUI. And then you're going to be adding that local script to the text button. To add it, you're just going to click on the plus sign and then click on local script. All right, so on this local script, we're going to start with a variable for the button. So let's say local button. And that's going to be equal to script dot parent. Next, we're going to create a variable for tween service. So we'll say local tween service. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. And inside the parentheses, we're going to put tween service. After that, we're going to define the tween info, which is going to be the properties of the tween animation. So we'll say local tween info. And that's going to be equal to tween info dot new. We're going to put parentheses and then press enter. The first property that we need to set is the time. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.5. The next property is the easing style. So we're going to set that by saying enum dot easing style. And I'm going to choose linear for this. There's a couple different styles, so I'll leave a link in the description so you can check the other ones out. The next property is the easing direction. So we're going to say enum dot easing direction. And I'm going to set that to out. The next option is the repeat count. So we're going to say zero because we're not going to have a repeat. After that is going to be either true or false, whether we want it to reverse or not. In this case, we don't. So we're going to say false. And the last option is a time delay, and we're going to set that to zero. Next, we're going to use the mouse enter event to know when the player's mouse has entered the button. So we're going to say button dot mouse enter colon connect. We're going to connect this with a function. Inside this function, we're going to create the tween that's going to move the button across the screen. To start, though, we're going to choose a random x and y position on the screen for this GUI to go to. So let's start by saying local, and then we're going to say new underscore x, and that's going to be equal to math dot random. And inside the parentheses, we're going to choose between 0 and 100. And then we're going to divide that by 100. The reason we're dividing by 100 is so that we can get a decimal number between 0 and 1. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for the y, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. We're going to change this part to y. So those two variables we're going to use for the random x and random y position. So now all we have to do is create the tween and play it. So we'll say local tween is going to be equal to tween service colon create. Inside the parentheses we're going to put the object we're going to be tweening. So that's going to be the button. We're going to pass the tween info. Make sure the capitalization of this matches this right here. And the last part is going to be the property that we're going to be tweening. So that's going to be the position. So inside curly brackets, we're going to put position. And we're going to set that equal to udim 2new Inside the parentheses, we're going to start by putting new x, comma, 0, and then comma, and then our new y value. And then finally, we're going to say comma, 0. Okay, after we create the tween, we're going to play it by saying tween, colon, and play. And that's it. So let's go ahead and check it out and make sure it works. So if I try to move my mouse inside this button, it goes to a new spot on the screen. There's some different properties with the script that you can adjust. So if you want the button to move faster, you can make this number right here smaller. So let's try 0 0.25. Another thing you can adjust with the script is where on the screen the button can move to. So if you want to keep it closer together where it's not going to move as far, you can choose different numbers for X and Y. So let's keep it between 25 
and 75. And we'll do that for the Y as well. And what that's going to do, it's going to cut out some of the edges here. So it's only going to be able to move in a region like this. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out with the new changes, and we'll see what happens. All right, and we can see right away the button's moving quite a bit faster. And if you notice, it's not getting as close to the edge of the screen as it used to. It's keeping more toward the center. So those are just some different things you can adjust with the script to customize the behavior of the button. And finally, if you want to add some script whenever this button is clicked, I can show you how to set that up. So we're going to start by saying button, and then we're going to say dot mouse button one click colon connect and then function and inside this function you would put the code that you want to run whenever the button gets clicked so for now just as an example let's go ahead and hide the button so we'll say button dot visible is equal to false all right so let's go ahead and run the code so we have both things happening so when the mouse enters the button it's going to go to new position and then if you're able to click on it it disappears Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.